I'm gonna do a little unboxing on this needle scaler that I got from Harbor Freight. I shopped around a little bit and there was some couple off brands on Amazon. Um, did a little bit of research and I saw there's a bunch of videos on um, YouTube and people talking about it, but apparently they're, it's one of those Harbor Freight deals that are pretty good. So what I'll be using this for is, I got these castings blasted. Um, this is my joiner here. And let me see if I can find my motor real quick. I got this motor and I didn't want to take it to the blaster because there's vent holes in here. You can kind of see right there and there's no real way to, you know, mask these off to keep the brass blast media out of here. Obviously this motor is really old. It's not replaceable. And there's a thick husk of leaded paint on this bad boy here. And so I need to strip it down. And so I'm hoping that needle scaler works pretty good. Um, I read somewhere that needle scalers are about the only quasi safe way of stripping leaded paint um reason being is they don't really create dust they more create like thicker particles that you could sweep up um also you could use this with a vacuum if it has a hepa filter on it you could safely evacuate the lead chips without you know causing a bunch of contamination and so forth uh, i was thinking about designing a little dust evacuation port on this thing with a vacuum port attachment on it so i could hook it up to my shop vac and then I throw a HEPA filter inside of there. That might be a future project. I'd say the package is decent for what it is. Um, you hear stuff rattling around there. This little piece of tape here is the only thing holding all the marbles in. But let me get up in this box. So what's this guy here? All right, so quality. Oil daily or void your warranty. Uh-oh. Better do that. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and pull all this stuff out off camera. Okay, this is a pretty simple device. Um, I think, so it, just to start off with, you need to buy a male air fitting to stick on here. There's a little screw in there to keep particles out. I mean, a screen, sorry. Um, I'll have to figure out, I think you oil directly in the port and then there's this anvil that reciprocates back and forth. So this looks like hardened steel anvil here. Then there's this little housing that slips down over this alignment feature here and, and it looks like you stick it in and twist it and it sticks on spring it goes down into this like that and this goes through here and these are the needles and so this anvil beats on these as it reciprocates and these little needles come out that's what's supposed to chip that paint off we're gonna try it and see how well it works but yeah this fits right down in here like that let's see if I can thread it in there Again, one-handed, this slips down in here like that. It's kind of long. Um, let me put it together and I'll measure it. Okay, not counting the end of the hose fitting there. This is right at 18 inches. This thing's long and it might be unwieldy. Um, I think one hand, you're gonna be pressing on this to to start the reciprocation and then the other hand up here um, there's another style of these they sell not at um, Harbor Freight but elsewhere where it has sort of a pistol grip um, I was thinking that might work better I'm gonna try this to see how it works I might wind up getting one of those but it seems like you can apply more pressure with the pistol grip I'm not exactly sure if pressure is something that'll help in this situation this may be like one of those tools where you just have to kind of apply like a moderate amount of pressure and let the tool do the work one of the things I like is this handle here it's pretty easy to grip and it doesn't require like a lot of force to hold it down some of those pistol grip things you wind up having to use your finger and you can get fatigued doing that especially if there's a lot of vibration going on so anyway let me get an air fitting on here and then we'll plug it in and try it just real quick um i bought the, this at harbor freight too i have a bunch of these in my shop and the reason i bought it at harbor freight is because um my home depot doesn't carry a very good selection of air fittings and so but anyway what you need to look at is this here the i and m and it needs to match up with the receptacle that you have i found that the, the combination of these two in the m style um they do a pretty good job of holding air and they don't really leak too much uh, i always have my air on so i can hear if there's a leak uh, my compressor will pressure will drop and it'll kick on and i have about eight drops in this <laughs> little shop and uh i got air hoses connected to each one of them hung up just so i can grab something real quick that's mainly what i do and then if uh 
then I got quick disconnect fittings on it so I could pop the air pistol off and then, you know, plug something else in. Anyway, these are decent and they're like a couple bucks. I'm gonna install this with sil um, some silicone tape. Uh, usually I use pipe dope um, to install air fittings. Uh, Teflon tape, I'm sorry. Okay, got it hooked up. Got my joint all taped up and tightened, plugged in. I'm gonna put a couple drops of oil in there and then I'm gonna pull out some tables and do a little test run for you. Okay, I put a couple drops in this and it changed the sound that it makes. And it's like more high frequency now. Um, one of the things I'll say is if you're stripping paint down for to paint something else, um, you should probably don't go crazy with the oil. Um, it comes out of this air airport here at the end the air does with the oil in it and so um you got to be careful about contaminating your paint surface in a way that is going to cause adhesion problems later hey, another thing just real quick these things are pretty nasty you might want to i think they probably have some kind of preserving oil or grease they put on them to keep them from getting too rusty but again if you're if you're working on a surface that's gonna get some paint, you might wanna do a good job of cleaning it off. Okay, I'm gonna use this to take some uh, rust off. I tried this in a little spot a second ago and this is obnoxiously loud, so you better put some earplugs in. Yeah, you can kind of see what it did to that surface there. Kind of knocked that rust loose. It was like a thick rust, like on the body of the car. I think it would do a pretty good job. For something flat like this, I'd probably use a sanding disc. I'm gonna try to use this on this paint. This is like a really thick paint buildup. See if I can knock it loose. Okay, so that took about a minute to strip that down. I have some bare metal, um, some of this filler, primer filler is still there, but did a pretty good job of taking that thick paint off. Um, even a grinder would tend to warm that up and smear it around. And so, and also it doesn't really create a dust. It's more like particles um, that you may be able to sweep up later. And so for this lead concern that I was talking about, Here's the chips that I was I swept up with this thing. All right, that it created just to show you, it's like a kind of a sandy consistency, and it doesn't really. The particles are too big to like get into the air. They kind of just fall down on the table, and so that's another safety item. It's probably better than wire wheel or whatever else that you could use. It really just throws. All kinds of particles in here. All 
Okay, this worked pretty good for something like this. Like, there's no way you're getting paint off of this with a grinder. Um, a wire wheel might work, but not quite as well. One of the things it does is it kind of pushes the part around a little bit. So I do recommend using some kind of clamp or something to hold your stuff down. I think it'll, it'll make it easier. It's pretty hard to use with one hand uh, just because it's so long and because of the size and weight of it, it vibrates around at will and it's difficult to, to kind of manage with one hand. Like I said, this thing's pretty heavy. Um, if you're doing like a really big job, I mean, I wanna say, let me see if I can get a weight off the instructions. Okay, uh, I didn't find the weight in the actual manual, but I looked online and it was 6.3 pounds. And um, so it's not light, it's kind of long and unwieldy. I wouldn't say that um, it's um, difficult to use. Like I said, you're just holding the tool, let the tool do the work. I think if you're adding a lot of pressure, you're probably doing it wrong. Um, also, let's see, okay. 4,700 blows per minute. I guess that's a important figure that's usually listed for these. Average air consumption, it says 2.8 CFM, cubic feet per minute at 90 PSI. Um, so if you have a very, like a pancake compressor or something like that, it's probably not gonna keep up with this tool. And if it, and if you do wind up activating your compressor motor, you probably wanna wait a little while and let it charge out for you. I mean, three CFM's not like super high, so. I think most compressors should be able to push it. So now to answer the question, if um, this is a good purchase. So I paid $99.99 is the list price. I got it, I used a 25% off coupon, so I got it right at 74 and some change. Uh, you could get cheaper ones. Um, this one seems like it's good quality, you know what I mean? It's got good fit and finish. Uh, I think, I don't think there's any, like a bunch of technology in these. Um, it seems like it works, you know what I'm saying? Um, you saw how I handled this paint. That's the main reason why I would use this. You know, something like these corners here, would be very difficult to use a wire brush or something to get that paint out. Um, again, it makes like a powder or not a powder, but sort of, it's almost chips that come off of this so um if you're if it's if it is lead paint or if you're interested in trying to keep the chemicals out it doesn't seem like it produces like a bunch of dust it's more sort of heavy chips that fall down so anyway um it seems like it works pretty good uh, for 74 dollars i feel pretty good about it i'll use it throw it in my drawer and if i need it you can take it off uh, for paint and knocks it off pretty quick for rust unless it's like thick rust like flaky rust i'd probably just use a uh I'd probably just use a grinding wheel or some kind of um wire wheel uh to knock the rust off especially something flat like that i mean it's way quicker but it seems like it does a good job another thing that i think it'll be good for is areas like this where something's going on in the casting here you can see like a little inclusion they might have done like a welder repair to try to fill that in but there's some porosity in it and i'm going to paint this so that it looks i want it to look like you know automotive finish and so i'm going to see i'm going to use a scaler on here see if i can knock these blisters off here's another one not exactly sure what this is this casting is really old okay so i just used this off camera to knock that blister off of this casting you can see everything just fell down in pieces and it got all the scale off. So scale removal or any kind of like, you know, the, the byproduct from wire or um, stick welding from the flux core where it deposits on the weld. I think this will work really good for that. Um, or if you just had like some kind of flaky buildup or some, some kind of material that had, you know, just slag or any kind of scale build up on it. Like I said, I, I feel pretty good about it. It seems like a good, decent tool. So if, um, I guess if that appraisal changes, I'll make another video about it. But yeah, there you go. Over and out.